Hello and welcome back to Mosaic in Malaysia. My name is Jason Yap and you are watching the Background Dancer YouTube channel. Now, although I did say that the previous episode would have been the last, I was doing some thinking and decided to do one more but completely different just to round up season one of this very special series. Now, kindly reminder, if you have not checked out the previous four episodes here on Mosaic in Malaysia, I highly recommend it because that was the one that I interviewed the likes of Kelvin Wong, J.S. Wong from the drama and dance industries respectively. And there were just wonderful discussions about arts, policy, and yeah, basically the future of the Malaysian performing arts scene. So definitely go and check them out once you finish this one, of course. In today's video, however, I will be sharing to you mostly from the perspective of a Malaysian dance artist living and working abroad, something that I've been doing myself for the past two and a half years. And of course, if you add on my studies, an extra four. So I've been away from home for about seven years now. I'm going to talk about some of the pros, some of the cons, and even offer you some tips and tricks of how to survive out here in the wild. And of course, I will be finishing everything up with a slightly philosophical take of my personal journey so far. But before we begin today's video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for the Mosaic in Malaysia series, Chindana Malaysia. Now, thank you for empowering Malaysian artists and for giving me a voice to share not only my work but also my passion to both Malaysians and also the entire world. So thank you so much once again for this wonderful opportunity. Now without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I've talked about this many times already on my own podcast, The Background Dancer, but also those that I've guested on and that is that I was a latecomer as well as a late bloomer to the world of dance. You know, I started dancing when I was 16, but only took it quite seriously at the age of 18 once I graduated from high school. So that was about like 10 years ago. And the crux of it all is being a Malaysian artist is incredibly, incredibly rare, but also incredibly, incredibly tough, right? We know as Malaysia, we do lack a whole lot of infrastructure, finances, which really results in a low key, but also constantly struggling economy. Now, the same definitely applied to me. When I wanted to do dance the first time round, I couldn't do so and had to really pivot to a conventional bachelor's degree and dance on the sides. And I was doing this with maybe like four different groups, including ballet, jazz, you know, circus arts, the commercial world, contemporary world, and just really going around and really trying to learn as much as I can, but not really having this end goal or at least this hope that I would be able to do it professionally one day. But in the end, of course, in hindsight, everything was fine and I managed to really achieve my dreams with the two most valuable things I believe every artist should have, passion and resilience. Now, we will talk about this a little bit more later on, but yeah, these are the two things that really got me to as far as I've been today. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of being a Malaysian artist living and working abroad, right? There are many actually, but I'm just going to choose three of each. And then after that, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks, of course, of how to survive out here in the wild. Number one pro, breadth of opportunities. Now, if you're talking about relocating to a big city, let's say London, Paris, Berlin, or even places like New York, of course, then there's going to be a lot more diverse individuals, diverse talent pools that you can tap into. And with that, of course, you're gonna have a bit more exchanges, which leads to more collaboration. And all of this, of course, results in more opportunities. Now, if there is one asset that's going to be the most valuable for you moving forward, it's going to be human talent. Yes, human talent is one of the most commodifiable assets right now. And honestly, the number one resource for you and me as an artist. Number two, greater learning curve. Now, being in a different context for sure demands you to learn a whole new set of skills and domain of knowledge. 
now it's really important to adapt to where you are and of course this newfound independence i'm assuming of course if you relocate you're going to be mostly alone at least from your family members and your immediate friends then that's going to of course help you grow so much faster than if you are back home where you kind of know where to find everything that you need number three flying the malaysian flag now as you can see i am a very very patriotic and passionate malaysian especially after i started becoming much more of an artist and i found it so important after traveling the world for this much that people really need to know where malaysia is but most importantly what exactly is the malaysian performing arts scene like now, instead of also just going out into the wild and introducing Malaysia to the world, I think if we represent ourselves properly, it's also going to help people come back to Malaysia. For example, international talents coming in to join huge festivals that we have here and really attract that caliber of people. So flying the Malaysian flag for me is not just about telling people about Malaysia, but also helping Malaysia become a magnet for international talent. So those are the pros. What about the cons? Yes, of course, there are some cons to being a Malaysian, living out here, working out here. So what could they be? Number one, stagnated network. So this is absolutely common sense. If you come to a whole new place, you're gonna have to rebuild your network, right? Starting from zero, and if you're not very much a builder then it's, of course you're going to be a lot more challenged in this respect you know even me as somebody who's super productive and just somebody who historically loves to build teams i had to take a lot of time to build my own teams and my own networks both whilst i was in hong kong and now currently in slovakia so it is definitely a challenge in that sense now let's not mention language barriers yes you know if you are moving to a non-English speaking community, let's say, you're gonna need a bit of time to adapt to the local language. And honestly, language is a key into many different things. For example, collaboration and where's the food and where are the institutions? Basically a key to all the most important things that you need. Language is definitely that key. Number two, the alien effect. Now, hear me out here. The reason why I call it the alien effect is very much a parody to what I've experienced here in Slovakia, which of course comes from my experiences with the Foreign Affairs Ministry. Um, this is the place that I get my visa and handle all my documents. And in Slovak, the way they sort of translate that entire department sounds like this. It's the police for the aliens. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Now the word they use, of course, is a different context. It kind of means more like foreigner, but I kind of took it as a joke that, yeah, you know, you're calling every foreigner aliens. And maybe actually that's kind of the first and foremost meaning of what an alien is. Basically not the UFO type alien, but somebody who is not familiar to your context. And this is something that has become quite personal for me because I have to say that no matter how hard you try and how much you assimilate to a local culture, no matter how much success you found and whatever legacy you've left in a place that you were not born in, you'll never be one of them, right? And this is just common sense, you know? It's just something that you can never, I guess, overcome and you should always embrace and accept moving forward. Now, loneliness is also going to be a factor. You know, if you relocate by yourself, then a lot of times you're gonna have to fight a fender on your own. Now, if you have a partner or you have some friends here, that's gonna help a little bit, but I'm not talking mostly about friend circles, I'm talking about being a Malaysian, what it feels like to be next to another Malaysian person. And if it doesn't matter to you, then that's great, but I for sure think it matters to me when I find another Malaysian out here in Europe. You just, it's, it's great, it's just, it's just a great feeling. Number three, the brain drain. Now, as a result of Malaysians seeking better opportunities outside, Malaysia, of course, is experiencing a huge brain drain of the one thing it needs most, in my opinion, which are artistic talents. 
right? And sometimes we don't have a choice. We do need to learn other things and then maybe and hopefully come back in the future. But I was very lucky because when I left Malaysia or before I even left Malaysia, I did have a whole group of people sort of guiding me and mentoring me along the way, helping me make good decisions and I guess really helping me build this bridge to where I am right now. So the question is, if this generation doesn't do the same, the only people who are really going to suffer are the future generations and that is a prospect I'm not really looking forward to if the current generation keeps on leaving Malaysia. So that is for sure a con for me. So tips and tricks, what do you need to do or what can you do to help yourself in all these different situations? Number one, become the best learner possible. Once again, if you're gonna need a skill or some knowledge of having to live and work outside of your home country, the best thing for me is to be the best learner you can be. Learn to adapt, learn to assimilate, learn to pick up new skills as economies continue to evolve and the freelance arts market continues to expand. So you're not going to be a full-timer most of the time. You're going to be a freelancer who has a portfolio career of many different skills and many different jobs and talents. But that's really how I guess the world is going into, not just for the arts, but also other industries. Number two. Never fear a lack of opportunity, fear instead a lack of preparation. Now this sentence was something that my Form 6 teacher told me and I've never forgotten it ever since. Right? And it really applied to my life, to be honest. Opportunities are just everywhere. But it really depends on whether you're, well, tossed and ready to grasp them. And not everyone is, of course. Opportunities come and go, and the most important thing is to be able to see them and to be ready for them when they eventually do. So I guess my point here is, don't be afraid of a lack of opportunity. Really just be afraid that you are not ready for them when they do come. Number three, don't be afraid to share your dreams. Now, dreams are something that I feel is so underappreciated and underrated right and that goes to say for passion as well you know and being around the world at this point I feel like I've met a lot of people but not everybody has a dream right a lot of people want to hire you to build their dreams but if you have a dream that for me is seriously your treasure so being out here being out in the wild when you have to fight and fend for yourself it's really important to have a dream and to really work towards that with your passion. All right, so I know that was a whole lot of information. So let's just take a few steps back and slow this down a little bit by once again asking the question of what does it mean? What does it mean to be a Malaysian artist living and working abroad? Now, the point really being is that it's not for everyone. It is extremely rare and even very circumstantial as to whether one actually gets to do it in the long run, right? You have to think about things like visas, what discipline you belong to, whether you like the food, the weather, and whether you are a family-oriented person or a wanderer yourself. So once again, not every Malaysian gets to work abroad, not every Malaysian wants to do that. But if you're one of them, then there are a few things, of course, that you need to maybe think of. Being one of them myself, I really do have this responsibility, this feeling of gratitude that I get to do so and I get to learn from the wider world. And that really makes me want to share my passion and my work much more back to, of course, my home country, Malaysia, and all the people there that I truly and really care about and miss. There are many things that I have learned and it's so hard to necessarily go back and tell all these stories but I guess you know with and through something like this we have the opportunity to do so. And once again the message is quite simple. If you do not want to live and work abroad that's completely fine but if you are one like me who is just so hungry to really find out what is there outside of Malaysia, then the message to you is very simple, is do not stop trying 
and do not stop persevering. So this brings me back to the earlier ideas of passion and resilience, right? What does it mean to have these two values carry you through your life? Now, I have to be really honest with you, and I've been around the world for a little bit here, I still believe that Malaysians are some of the most talented, passionate, and resilient people. Now, we are very few, those who have made it outside and who want to be outside, but those who have, we are truly resilient or else we wouldn't be here in the first place, right? So despite all these insufficiencies of our economy and our arts community, there are no shortages of successes so far, both locally and internationally. Now, coming from the world of dance myself, I guess I can only speak of my own predecessors. So people like Joseph Victor Gonzalez, people like Lok So Kim, Jack Keck, J.S. Wong, Steve Go. I mean, the list goes on and on. Of course, there are many more that I have not mentioned, but all these people have made an incredible mark on wherever terrain they've been in. And I have real examples of this happening in my life. So when I finally managed to pursue my dream of being in a dance academy in Hong Kong, I remembered the first day I went to class and my teacher was, oh, you're Malaysian? Okay, great. Now, do you know this, 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 and this person? Of course, all those people I did know because they were Malaysians. And the teacher just went, you have to be just like them, if not even better. And I was like, what? Okay, I thought the pressure would have been lifted when I finally managed to step out and chase my dreams, right? Because that was the only thing I wanted. But then something would just add on after that and after that. And I realized, yes, the benchmark for being a Malaysian artist is really high because our predecessors have done really well in the past. And it's only, I guess, right to keep on to continue this legacy and to really continue what we have built so far. It's the same for me, really. My dream and my goal is really to try to emulate all these people and maybe even usurp them at some point, right? Because I think they would say the same. They would want the next generation to do better and better and better for the future generations. And really, the only thing I want to do is to pave the way for more Malaysians to be able to do the same if they do have that mindset and intent in their heart. And I call this the moonshot, right? Being a Malaysian artist, it's, it's a very unpopular decision, of course, and that's why it's a moonshot, you know? People have been to the moon, and before people were on the moon, of course, nobody thought people could do it. So being a Malaysian artist, I think that's something that I can call it's moonshot, but it's a possible one. Now the next thing I want to talk about is this sense of sentiment that I've been building ever since I left Malaysia in 2019. Actually, I left in 2015 when I went to Hong Kong. And then of course now being in Europe, it's been almost seven years. And of course with the pandemic, I've not been home for two and a half years now, which is the first time I've never been home for that long. And all these things started to grow. And the crux of it all really is the further I go, the closer back home I want to be, right? Distance does make the heart fonder. The philosophical tenet of this entire exploration, I would say, or this story that I'm telling you is my constant investigation of whether I want to be sort of a big fish in a small pond versus being just one of many, many fish, many people in a big pond. And I think, of course, I started out just sort of wanting to be somebody who's out here and once again, creating my own legacy and building my own success, carving out a long career, hopefully, but as the days go by, I started to realize that, yeah, you know, I could just be one of these people doing whatever and I'll never be one of them, like I already said before this. What could it mean though, if I went back to Malaysia one day and become much more of a torch bearer, much more of a change maker? Because yes, Malaysia does need that, no matter how much we talk about the amount of talent, the amount of resources. I mean, there are not many to begin with of a country of 30 million people. So there's already a huge need over there. So this really has been the conflict for 
as long as I can remember being an artist and it's really hard to want to go back to Malaysia because yeah it's just really tough to be an artist there but at the same time I do have a bigger goal and if you have one of those goals too, the big ones right, to change something about the economy and something about the industry like maybe it's much better to be a torchbearer and a change maker, somebody pivotal to that or else once again you'd probably just be like everyone else. So I'm just gonna end this by telling you a little story. Ever since I came here, I never thought that I would be here for a bit long. You know, maybe it's just gonna be two years or something. But then I realized, yes, there's so much to learn once you step out of your comfort zone, right? And it's not for everybody once again, you know. I've been in many situations where I wish I had just gone back or something, but I've always been a very passionate person and this passion pushes me forward every single day of my life right and it's been two and a half years since I've been home but every single day that I've not been home it just makes me want to do something big and just really contribute back to my country so the passion burns ever brighter and hopefully burns ever longer as a Malaysian artist I do believe that Malaysia as the arts market needs a whole lot more leaders entrepreneurs crazy idealist and whatever that could really uplift us as a community and I hope if you have the same intentions then we are going to do the same in the future hopefully together to be well the future of Malaysia performing arts so that's it from me today and once again the message is really clear and I'm just throwing it to you if you are just like me or if you have any thoughts about what I've said so far comment below and reach out to me because I'm always out here hunting for people like-minded people to join me on this journey I really really want to connect with more people who have yeah just the same goal and same dream and same passion and it's really tough to be an artist and creator I understand but this is what makes us keep on going right like community passion and goals dreams so do reach out to me don't hesitate at all if you have not watched the previous four episodes once again go and check them out they were really really cool conversations about everything Malaysia performing arts and this is, will be the final episode of Mosaic in Malaysia season one so I hope you enjoyed this once again you can reach me on all the socials Everything is in the description and the links below, so do check them out. Once again, thank you so much for your time, and I really hope you enjoyed this. My name is Jason Yam, and I'll see you in the next one.